Hello everyone. Welcome back to Meep Sciences Channel. So this is the glimpse of a presentation delivered by Dr. Deepankar Ghosh in a 5 days online faculty development program on emerging areas of biological and chemical sciences 2021 which has been organized by Department of Biosciences and Department of Chemistry of JIS University Kolkata. So Dr. Deepankar Ghosh has delivered a very eminent talk on current trends in biofuels generation in this FDP program. So let's take a look and enjoy a very short and brief lecture deliberation on trends in biofuel and generation at the current state of art. So these are the basic summarized way out that how we are going to progress with our presentation. It will begin with the introduction following classification of biofuels in brief, advantage and demerits of using biofuel technologies, what are the basic biofuel policy has been established worldwide and how they are going to get implemented to make a new refinery approach of waste to energy, followed by conclusion, future recommendation, and that will be the end of this session. So let's get started. So usually a biofuel is a kind of energy resource. Those who are being produced by renewable biomass. That means the waste, they are the gold mine. They can be easily broken down into the monomeric form and that monomeric form will begin get transferred by making different forms of biofuel. So microorganisms are usually played very important role on this aspect. They do carry out different metabolic activities. They do carry out different kind of tolerant sciences and then they will break down this renewable complex polymeric biomass, mostly lignocellulosic biomass and then transform them into the value added biofuel. The process of converting solar energy into chemical energy was very primitive and conventional technologies that already been established worldwide. But the issue was there, lot of chemical discharge and lot of chemical waste can also be generated. Not only chemical waste, lot of uh, chemical associated physical tools can also be generated. That could be electronic waste. So to avoid this phenomena, biofuel could be an possible outweigh which can easily sequester carbon dioxide and also give rise to different forms of biofuels, especially biodiesel, biohydrogen. So the term biomass is used to name in this presentation several times. So usually biomass are none other than the lignocellulogic pests, those who might be derived from agricultural crop extracts or they may be coming from the vegetable resources. But it always be a good idea not to compete with the food chain. Instead, it could be a good idea to use the agrochemical waste biomass as a lignocellulogic waste to use as a renewable cheaper feedstock for a generation of biofuel. So biofuel is a part of bioenergy and bioenergy is the renewable energy that made available from material which are derived from the living resources, mostly microbes or the plant. Those who are generating bioenergy through the photosynthesis and animal get it by the consuming green plants. The organic materials, the constituents contains energy in the form of biomass, a storage energy and which is fundamental form of biochemical energy storage system. That's why the main resource or the reservoir of biomass are the forests, agricultural crops. Those are also called energy crops and residual part resulting from the agroforestry and the livestock industry. These are none other than the lignocellulogic biomass, which are the waste biomass so far, so forth from the agroforestry industries. So biomass is the first traditional fuel that was used by the human being. It was the backbone of fuel economy of the 18th century. Even though the net carbon emission by biomass energy is considered as zero because the amount of carbon liberated into environment does equivalent to the amount of carbon sequestration from environment by the green plant doing photosynthesis and liberation of oxygen. So this is the distribution of resources on the gross energy generation. So you can see here that there are so many different forms of energy that we have been utilizing like biofuel and waste, natural gases, oil, the peat, the others, even the electricity. But you can still see that most of the energy reservoir that we have from where we are harnessing our energy resource, these are mostly from the chemical or the biochemical electricity of 80%. Natural gases, 15% occupies this drain and also oil 41%, which is actually digging up from the, the core of the soil. 
by fail and the waste seal it is far behind it is only occupies 13 percent but that's why the acceleration or the paradigm shift they definitely need to be required to switch over the conventional fuel to biofuel technology from waste materials so these are the basic uh, uh, scenarios or the distribution of resources on the gross energy generation which shows that how the conventional biofuels are there what are the different kinds of advanced biofuels are in in plantation so usually bioethanol biodiesel type biofuels and also biomethane biohydrogen they are the most advanced forms of the biofuel which are mostly get derived from the advent of microbial metabolism microbial metabolic regulation utilization of the cheaper lignocellulogic feedstock to provide you the in the form of the energy condensed biofuel but it was a little bit differ from the conventional resources of the biofuel or the chemically derived fuel so mostly they have emission they do contain the lots of emission of carbon uh, emissions which are not environmentally benign at all but now if you go for the advanced biofuel generation mostly bioethanol and the biodiesel which are derived from the advent of microbial communities their emission rate of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide was comparatively less while they have been combusted by using engine so based on these trends based on this facts and figures there was a classification system has been established to define to clarify the biofuel technology the term biofuel refers to in the form of liquid or the gaseous fuel that are commonly divided or clarified into three generations number one first generation biofuel following second generation and third generation biofuel so what is the first generation biofuel what are the basic narratives over here the first generation biofuels are also called the conventional biofuels. They are made from things like sugar, starch, vegetable oil. Note that these are all coming from the food products. They are competing with our food chain and the food ecosystem. So it is very important to note that the structure of the biofuel itself does not alter between generations, but rather the source from which the fuel is derived that got altered several times. So the first generation biofuels suffer from the same problems and the pitfalls, including the threading the food chain, alleviating carbon emission while they are burning when planned outside traditional agricultural settings and they do have an intense growth requirement. So these are the tabular presentation that have been associated with technologies for producing first generation biofuels. The most typical first generation biofuel types are the biodiesel and bioethanol. So biodiesel, usually they got derived from the energy crops like methyl ethyl esters of the fatty acids. Biodiesel can also be get started to generate by utilization or combustions of the waste. Then what are the basic feedstock? Those who are competing with the food chain like oil crops, soybean, rapeseed, palm seeds, even sometimes cooking and frying oil. Those who are the waste oil, they can also be utilizable for generation of the methyl or the ethyl ester of the precursor of the biodiesel. Then in the conversation technologies like cold and warm processing, extraction, purification, transesterification, hydrogenation reactions, they are the downstream processing units or the processes which requires to clarify or purify the biodiesel which are derived with the advent of the utilization of the food crops for making or by utilizing the microbial community. In contrary, bioethanol is another biofuel type those who are mostly coming from the sugar beet, sugar cane, corn, wheat and other grains with the help of the direct fermentation of the extract or by enzymatic hydrolysis and fermentation. But the issue here is they are competing directly with the food chain. Even the emission will generate lots of chlorofluorocarbon that will induce the global warming as such. That is the base, basic lacuna that far behind or far lies in the generation of first generation biofuels. In compared to first generation biofuel, the second generation biofuel little bit advantages. The term second generation biofuel is mostly defined mainly on the basis of feedstock and the conversion technologies, the downstream processing or the microbial processing. The main second generation biofuel that have been studied in the last couple of decades. These are mostly like the hydro treated vegetable oil termed as HVO, hydro treated esters, fatty acids, HEFA fuels, also referred to as jet fuel those who are used in the aviation industries, also based on HVO derivation products. Cellulosic ethanol, like 
chemically there is no difference between the cellulose ethanol from the conventional bioethanol but the the uses of cheaper feedstock is a major concern over here so this is the nice pictorial presentation which shows that the basic approaches and avenues for the biogeneration of second generation biofuels it shows how the lignocellulogic biomass can easily get transformed into the value added products these are having the application of different advanced and the avenues like biochemical or physical conversation includes chemical processing physical processing biological processing followed by thermochemical conversations like pyrolysis gasification and liquefaction and these all novel technologies to break down the lignocellulogic complex polymeric substances as a waste from the agrochemical or the agroforestry industries they can come up with some lots of value added main products so what are those main value added products that could be get transformed from the lignocellulogic biomass lignocellulogic ethanol dimethyl ethyl component dme the biobutanol advanced biodiesel different value added products like syn gases like the aviation jet fuel and solar fuel as well let's talk about the follow up third generation biofuel the biofuel of the third generation come from mostly algal biomass now people are not even depending on the lignocellulogic biomass they want some kind of refinery some kind of biocell factory approach where microorganism itself will carry out the capture of solar energy sequestration of carbon dioxide and ultimately produce lots of biomass and the biomass is the reservoir of different carbon sources in a polymeric form and that will ultimately produce from the lignocellulogic biomass the products resulting from their conversion are described as the third generation biofuel because they do no longer require the use of land the arable land for their cultivation their production technologies use catalytic reforming routes to convert sugar either in the form of exos or pentose starchy materials and all forms of lignocellulose into targeted short chain carbon compounds like alkane alkenes etc they can also convert it into methyl or ethyl esters to give you the the very advanced form of biodiesel from algae the technologies for the third generation biofuel production are still in the development phase because lots of physical chemical parameter optimization requires to be simulated new algae strain needs to be established having higher potentiality that can easily have the higher efficacy of co2 sequestration having higher photon capture having higher photosynthetic coefficient that will ultimately allow to make lots of precursor that will ultimately get converted into the value added biofuels like bioethanol bio uh, diesel bio hydrogen even the biomass which could have higher impact in the field of biofuel technology as a char or compost materials so these are the nice schematic diagram which shows that the basic concepts and the clarification of the third generation biofuels so these are mostly based on the algal biomass and you can see that methanol syn gas methanol ethanol hydrogen electricity can also be the major outcome that can be derived by the growth of the algal biomass following catalytic synthesis following gasification following extraction or by anaerobic digestions or by following simple fermentation or mixotropic growth conditions that will ultimately give you a lot of other forms of advanced biofuels like gasoline naphtha kerosene and biodiesel following trans esterification reaction even methanol can also be get transformed into ethylene acetate formaldehyde methyl acetate dme those who are the major precursor for the jet fuel generation in the aviation industry that can all derive from the algae based third generation biofuel by sequestering co2 by capturing photon and then do biocatalytic activities as a metabolic cell factory so this is very simple way i made this workflow for explaining like the basic workflow how the biofuel generation can be done utilizing the cheaper feedstock or lignocellulogic biomass now here you can consider sugarcane as a cheaper feedstock then what what are the basic steps which are involved that that will make all of you very com compatible and easy to understand how the entire process can be carried out in the industrial scale so first we have to collect the sugar cane the waste extract go for washing milling followed by the baggage and the molasses generation whereas the baggages will go for the boiler and they will generate sludge and they can also be utilized for the bioelectricity generation by their combustions and the burning you can carry out the vacuum filtration and the filtration pre can be used as a compost 
as a biofertilizer. On the similar end, the milling process will allow to come up the juice. Juice will be con 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 consist of lots of carbon uh, sources like pentose or hexose sugars that can be go for the clarification. Clarified juice can be go for evaporation and the syrup that can go for producing different food communities. In the similar way, whatever the waste material has been generating as a molasses, as a complex compound, that can go for the fermentation process. And that molasses is the cheapest feedstock that has been extracted and derived from the sugar cane. So after the fermentation or anaerobic respiration process, molasses will be converted into carbon dioxide and also it will give rise to different forms of liquid biofuels. And these liquid biofuels could be the hydrated ethanol. And this particular mechanism will be carried out by using our very friendly known yeast, that is Cis Saccharomyces cerevisiae, Cis Saccharomyces fombe, or Zymomonas mobilis. So this is an overall general overview which shows that how sugar cane can be biologically transformed into the bioethanol with the help of the metabolic activity of the yeast cells where the molasses could be used as a feedstock and that will ultimately transform into carbon dioxide and ethanol followed by the anaerobic respiration or fermentation process. Now let's talk about the advantage. What are the basic benefits over using the biofuel than the conventional uh, chemically derived fuel molecules like ethanol? The use of bioethanol reduces the emission of carbon monoxide released by the vehicle exhaust gases beside which reduces fuel consumption. Biobutanol compared to ethanol, butanol can be mixed with higher proportion with the gasoline beside the use of the biobutanol in its pure form does not require additional modification to the engine. Biomethanol production has significant economical benefits over the production of other liquid biofuels. In comparison with gasoline use, powering of engine while fuel from the gasoline mix with impurity of ethanol reduces emission of harmful chlorofluoro substances in the atmosphere. That will automatically reduce the greenhouse gas emission and also reduce the chances of atmospheric pollution. In case of biodiesel or FEM, the use of biodiesel fatty acid methyl esters allows the significant reduced emission of harmful compounds and particulate matter during engine operation compared to traditional chemically derived diesel. At the same time, biodiesel has the good lubricating property which allows increasing the engine service and the lifetime or the half-life. Biodiesel, the use of HVO, the hydro-treated vegetable oil biodiesel, reduces NOx, PM and CO2 emission compared to traditional diesel fuel. Whereas the dimethyls, they are the proportional performance and efficiency with biodiesel or diesel fuel will having a high octane number or C10 number, how particulate emission. So that will automatically reduce the, the chlorofluorocarbon during the combustion. So it will reduce the environmental concern. However, lots of advantages are there, lots of benefits are being associated with biofuel technology, but they do also suffer to have some little bit of disadvantages that we need to overcome. That if we can overcome these disadvantages or pitfalls, then we can make this biofuel technology more sustainable. That will be the most sustainable avenue for bioenergy generation from utilization of the waste materials. In case of ethanol, the consumption of bioethanol in the engine power supply is by 51% higher than the gasoline consumption. So that will also cause some problems which are associated with the internal combustion engine. So that is the one basic requirement the technology needs to be developed that can allow the 100% combustion of the bioethanol by using bioethanol compatible engine development. Now, lower productivity is another issue because microorganisms and their rate of productivity is not comparable with the chemical process. That's why a lot of acceleration needs to be required that will allow to improve the productivity of the biobutanol, biomethanol or the biodiesel production. In a similar fashion, biomethanol or biodiesel, they can also contain with a lot of impurities and that impurities are a little bit of toxic like aldehyde compounds. So the reduction of toxicity could be an another important issue. So toxicity issue needs to be resolved. That has to be addressed by the future researchers during the production of bioethanol, biobutanol or biodiesel. Similar way, if you consider the biomethyls or biodiesel, the lack of internal combustion engine could be an one issue. Economic feasibility is another issue because Cost-wise, if you try to produce biodiesel by means of microorganism, that will require a little bit of higher cost. So government has to make some kind of rules and policies that will allow to alleviate the process. 
similar way metabolic toxic intermediate generation needs to be addressed needs to be minimized that will ultimately make this biofuel technology more sustainable and that will be established as a most potential biorefinery approach in near future so let's see what are the basic policies and what are the biofuel policies they do exist as a present state of art different analyses have implied that both biodiesel and bioethanol produce considerably very low co2 but their combustions their generation of toxic molecules are the major prevalent issue protect cons consumers from the global volatile price for the low materials and to promote the free competition are other objective of this policy food grains production is a concern the use of food commodity for biofuel is considered limitation enough stress on giving proper dimension to the road for controlling the potential in the bioenergy sector even domestically generated biofuel would help to reduce the dependency on import of crude by the use of biofuel so the design of the policy for biofuel that's why is the most urgent requirement so unless we have proper design then implementation of the biofuel policy might not be properly happen might not be properly carry over to the society or for the community health purposes the policy on biofuel shall be well designed considering the good assessment considering the views considering the counter argument for major stakeholders that is biofuel industries agriculturists market oil companies r&d and also the researcher those who have been working in the laboratory despite many positive aspects of the biofuel so these are the basic design which has been shown and depicts in the figure 5 how the biofuel policy can be get designed and framed based on the very unique eight parameters like oil offtake and price guarantee the deriving minimum consumption form of biofuel tax compensation or the breaks the the fuel quality directives regulations rules research and development fundings from the r&d sectors uh, auto technology development like combustible engine development the subsidy removal on conventional fuels so these are the basic constraints which will allow to make the better design on the policy initiative to design the biofuel policy So this is NBM 2003 National Biofuel Mission has been established in 2003 to address the social economic and the environmental concerns by planning commission of India the commission mainly focused on the phrase expansion and enhancement of the plantation of biofuel peats the mission was proposed to have two different phases by 2006 to 2007 phase 1 for the demonstration of the projects in the lab scale and by 2011 and 2012 the phase 2 will be established that was on self sustaining expansion national biofuel policy was also issued in december 2009 and 10 the policy has proposed an indicative target of 20% blending of biofuel both for biodiesel and bioethanol by 2017 as a major road map the vision of policy is that to capacity building to the nation in the biofuel utilization the policy can be providing a substitute and alternative of petrol and diesel by promoting cultivation and production of biofuel technology in an sustainable manner the policy contains various aspects as mentioned soon as forward these are the basic things like distribution and marketing of the biofuel this is another important part of the national policy of biofuel 2010 So the entire chain of biodiesel production to needs to get marketed had a minimum purchase price this cost depends on the actual cost of production manufacturing import price of the diesel this whole process determined by the national biofuel coordination committee in case petrol and diesel price falls below the minimum purchase price then it would be duly compensated by government of india and this could be done by help of previously established marketing network infrastructure that will allow to responsibility reasonability of the storage and distribution where on the oil marketing companies lies similar way how we are going to implement it the implementation of the waste to energy is another important aspect of the national policy of biofuel 2010 The municipal solid waste (MSW) to energy is a rising a new hope of power generation. The bioenergy generation can be suitable option by utilization of the MSW with various advanced biochemical technologies. The rate of municipal solid waste generation is gradually being increasing 1 to 1.33 percent per annum. That's why the MSW could be get biodegraded towards the monomeric residues that can ultimately get bio transformed into energy and that arouses carries 35 to 60 percent of biodegradable organic parts as a waste india generates every year almost 50000 million tons of solid to 
1,500 million cubic meters of liquid waste, which can be recycled back for the energy or bioenergy generation. The 92.4 megawatt of urban waste to electricity generation is currently achieved by seven functional waste to energy plant. Around 241.8 megawatt capacity is presently installed in this nation. Metro and the large cities can have potential of 500 megawatt power generation, which can be enhanced up to 1,075 megawatt by 2031 and 2,780 megawatt by 2050. That is the major target of national policy of Biofuel 2010 for implementing the waste to bioenergy establishment as a sustainable way out. So this is actually the schematic diagram. What are the basic initiatives that has been taken by the MNRE for the waste to energy schema? I hope you can read over, you can get lots of information and statistical data set on that. So these are the different ministries which have been involved with the development of biofuel policies and technologies implementation in India. The nation like India, mostly MNRE, DST, MOFIP, the power and the natural gas, uh, MOA, the MORIH and railway and also the metro rails. These are the agencies, those who are being associated with policy designs. Now, if all these policies, all the implementation, all the application that has been put forward and could be established, then the concept of biorefinery can be attained in country like India. The basic concept of biorefinery is to utilize the waste biomass for the monomeric residue generation by pre-processing like development of the lignocellulose components defragmentation then by enzymatic breakage the cellulose can be broken down into the simpler sugar moieties in the form of extras or pentose sugar and finally the microorganism to able to carry out the fermentation and ultimately give rise you liquid or the gaseous biofuel which can also generate a lot of value-added biomaterials electricity and you can also use this biofuel for aviation technology which will ultimately give you less chlorofluorocarbon addition or emission within the environment. So this is the way how the cycle will be repeating and that biorefinery concept will reduce the waste biomass dumping as well as generation of biofuels and less emission of chlorofluorocarbon, carbon monoxide into the environment. So entire biorefinery approach from waste to energy, waste to bioenergy will be more sustainable and environmentally friendly. So these are the beasts basic different ministries, those who have been involved with the development of biofuel technology as a future technology fuel in India. There are different deliberations, their deliberations have been depicted like overall policy making, supporting research, research on the feedstock crop, tree born oil seed, TBO crop plantation, public awareness and the biofuel. These are the certain deliberable deliberations which are actually being uh, put forward by the ministries that will improve the awareness of public. They can also aware the research, researcher activities. They will also make overall policy and uh, development of the policy to support the R&D section as well as to implement the project in the grassroots level for the community services. Similar way, uh, there are different kinds of programs and schemes that, that have already been established like Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme for the generation of the power generation of biofuel from the waste like Indian Council of Agriculture Research. They have also been in, engaged. Biodiesel blending, the plantation of the biofuel energy crops, they are also the part of this ministry and the scheme that has been implemented already in biofuel policy of India. Now we come to a conclusion and also some with some future recommendation that will allow to develop the new financial mechanism for bioenergy projects to conduct awareness utilization of bioenergy applications in rural areas of nation because these areas are mainly hotspot for waste biomass generation and also dumping. To facilitate the techno-economical feasibility of the bioenergy application with the short payback time. Even that will allow to develop and establish the new research and development centers, which are specific geographical location based, that will allow to monitor the feedback system and also able to establish to start the attractive and industrial viable intensive schemes. This can be empowered as a biopower industry and generate employment. So finally, at the end, I would like to acknowledge JIS University, JIS Group of Educational Initiatives, and also the organizing mem members or the committee members of the five days online faculty development program on emerging areas in biological and chemical sciences 2021 department of biosciences department of chemistry of jis university kolkata and all the participants on the online platform those who have been watching and enjoying this session 
I hope you have enjoyed and if you have any further question, any queries, please put your comments on our channel. Thank you very much. This is my current research group. I really uh, thankful to all of my PhD scholars, my MSc research trainees and internship students, those who have been supporting me since last three to four years. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. Take care all.